Hello everybody, this is Chuck Weger and we're at the State Capitol in my office and wow, we have a big visitation today from various uh, constituents and today we have trades persons from the district and uh, a number of uh, unions are represented. I want to welcome each of you to the Capitol today to talk about a number of the issues that are being considered at the State Capitol. And I, uh, we can go around and if you'd like to you know, say who you are, where you live, and um, you know, what you do for your work, and then we'll have a little discussion on some key points too. So we can start here or here. Who'd like to go first? Okay. Hi. I'm Kara Barr. I'm a 49er. Where do you live, Kara? North St. Paul. Okay, and by 49er, tell us what that means. Operating engineer. Correct, yep. What I'm a crane that? operator apprentice. You're a crane operator apprentice. So Correct. There's probably, that's a, not as many women in that field. So mm, you're a trailblazer? Not so many right now, no. Okay, and what got you uh, involved uh, recruiting for this profession uh, or this trade? I love it. Okay. It's fun. Okay, well, very good. Uh, we'll get back on some of the particular recommendations you're making. Uh, Brad? I am Brad Medved. I'm from Oakdale. Um, I am a fourth year apprentice uh, with uh, local 110 IBEW uh, electricians. Great. And I'm uh, Mike Hawes from Oakdale and a retired electrician from local 110. Very good. Hello, my name is James Eng. I'm from North St. Paul. I am a retired laborer and I have uh, many decades in. Very good. Laboring. Good. And as a laborer, tell us, you know, some of the, you know, there's a lot of different things that can be. Um, we are primarily the grunt of the construction. Well, in a very <laughs> important part. We, we. You're part of the team. We're part of the team. We assist any and every trade. Okay. So there might be times we're uh, assisting the you know, the operating engineers yep. or electricians, carpenters, millwrights. Yes. It just depends on that day. Right. Um, we, I've been in-house at 3M Construction. Okay. I did that for about 25 years. Then I um, got out of 3M. Then I went to uh, the coal side of Excel. Mm -hmm. I done several of the plants there. I've also done uh, about 21 nuclear uh, outages for mm -hmm. XL, one mm -hmm. over in Green Bay, but primarily Monticello and Prairie Island. Okay, so you've been very busy. Very busy, and also down at uh, Flint Hills. Okay, wonderful, so, thanks for sharing that, Jeff. And Dan. Yeah, Dan Holiday, North St. Paul. Okay. Um, Labors, local one, or 563. Yeah. Now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Very good. And Bobby. Yes. A retired millwright. And your last name, Bobby Lyons. Lyons. Where do you retired live? Retired millwright, North St. Paul, yes. Margaret Street. Yes. And uh, millwright by trade. And yeah. coming sure, up on 50 let years. everyone know what a millwright does. Okay. And you've done that half a century. Yes. Okay. Uh, Congratulations. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, we install machinery. We do the, like when the Ford plant is here, we do overhaul. Yep. Personally, I worked at Monticello when they built it, Prairie Island when they built it, Becker when they built it. Did a lot of work at 3M. Okay. Worked around the country an awful lot. And okay. Now I'm back home doing this. Okay. <laughs> so, builders. Yeah. Put things together, make yeah. things happen. Yes. Right. Uh, yes, well, my name is Paul Landwehr. Um, I graduated from the U of M in 1991 and joined uh, Labor's International Union. I was a laborer for seven years. Um, became a 49er 19 years ago, so I've got 26 years into the trade. Um, Great. Uh, primarily road construction, but uh, involved in a little bit of everything. Run a little bit of everything, builder, blade, uh, backhoe, roads, okay. pavers. Where, and where are you from? Oakdale, Minnesota. Okay, good. Yeah. Well, nice to have uh, so many of the constituents here today and all working together in your visits. I see you have a number of handouts and uh, you know, who would like to sh share a couple of key points if it's on transportation, you know, the need for a bill or for you know, the bonding bill, um, but 
A prevailing <laughs> yeah. wage also. Uh, prevailing wage, well, yep. I don't see us uh, you know, repealing that, but is there a concern that that might be repealed, or is there anyone? That's always a concern. Okay. Yeah, that's, all, that's a concern, our concern, too, is that, you know, changes to it um, or that it be repealed. Okay. And uh, I certainly understand that. That's made it possible for so many people in the trades because of having a, a living prevailing wage that's going to give you a chance to have home ownership, uh, to live that American dream. Exactly. And uh, it's all about fairness and uh, being able to continue uh, to support yourself, support a family, whatever that choice is going to be. So. These are very uh, strong principles. I would, you know, oppose, uh, you know, any type of repeal on that. And, uh, you know, you're the builders, you're the people that, you know, and you said grunt work, but that's very responsible work putting together a project to maintain it. And uh, the training that goes into what you have done, the certificates, the licenses that are involved, I'm very aware of it. and. So uh, you, know, you certainly have you know, my support and hopefully the majorities in uh, fending off any proposals. I haven't seen any proposals that would you know, take away a prevailing wage and put you in a different classification. Uh, you know, if anything you well, need to one of our things that was brought up this morning before we came here was um, the prevailing wage helps keep Minnesotans employed versus out-of-state contractors coming in yes. and then them leaving with all of our our money, um, our tax dollars, and you know, and uh, whatever. Yes, else it money. leaves. You're, you're in the community. You're going to spend it locally. Oh, right. It all gets reinvested. You're retired. You're still staying here. Yes. But, uh, for those of you uh, who retired, I, I've seen you that. You deserve it after 50 years. So. <laughs> Good. I've seen that a lot for different, primarily uh, nuclear outages. Yes. Where we just don't have enough. Uh, different trades people trained in, so then they bring travelers in. I yes. understand we have to be manned yeah. up, yeah. but we would like to see more Minnesotans take over first. Yep. Well, let's hope we continue to you know, provide uh, you know, great jobs, opportunities. Yeah. There's a lot of unmet needs, and I know you want to see transportation addressed, as yes. do the majority of Minnesotans. I'll continue to support that, and you know, let's get a compromise, uh, uh, but let's get it done. And that's, uh, I think, what one of your key points here, and I have voted for a, uh, a transportation package several times. It doesn't get cheaper by uh, delaying this, so no. let's hope that gets done. There's a bonding bill which invests into many projects, whether it's, you know, for uh, the road infrastructure or for the colleges at Century, you know, there's just a, a lot of different projects that are in the bonding bill. Um, I have supported that in the past. I will again. It's imperative, I think, that that bonding bill be passed this year for nine years. I remember sitting at a rally down here when Paul Andy was in office, uh, Tim Paul Andy there, and uh, that was a struggle then because it was a Republican-controlled House and Senate. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it's been nine years. Yeah. It's imperative that that cooperation be established and that yes. get done. I think I speak for the majority of uh, people in the trades and certainly for the majority of your constituents as well as uh, Minnesotans. Yes. Uh, things are in shambles. Yeah. Well, um, I understand that. Uh, we'll support that again. And uh, thanks for emphasizing <coughs> the importance of that uh, here today. Uh, you know, I want to mention one thing just about the training programs that are available. Uh, you know, I'm very active in education issues, as you know. It's our goal for the education system that students graduate and that they're ready for college or tech school or for career. And there are great careers in what you are doing with living wage jobs. And the one thing that I've learned, too, is a lot of these apprentice programs are very reasonably priced and in fact in some cases uh, it doesn't cost very much at all because you're going to you know through your union and through employers there will be a, some match and if you can show the grit and you know the aptitude and you want to work 
it can be provided, but um, anyone like to comment about some of these yeah. training programs? I've been out to but a I couple would, of the yeah, training centers. I because I taught so. 30 years on the program. And okay. There wasn't one of our apprentices ever paid a penny to go to school, and they worked Yes. and went to school. Yeah. And I believe all the trades yeah. are, are doing that. We're in the same that's, way. Uh, the union pays for my apprenticeship. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So and we all pay together. True. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a partnership with the employer usually. Yeah. They're, yes. They're, they're, and mm -hmm. they have the expectations of, and you tell them that you've got the aptitude, the attitude. Then the union comes forward, the employer, and you're trained. There's a job there, and it's a win-win situation for you, the employer, for the state. So, I I am so impressed with the various uh, training centers, and so. I'm always telling uh, you know people you know if they're looking at maybe getting retrained or uh, if they're in high school they're exploring. In fact, we'll see a number of you know college graduates where they'll they'll say, well, I need to get a job yet, and they <laughs> will go to the trades then and can get yeah like yeah. like yourself. And so I know it can be very respectable and it can provide a pension. Yes, exactly. as well. And insurance. And, and so, insurance, yeah. so that's very important. So each of you would you know speak to that. I've been out to your training center too and on Conway, is it? And yep. St. Paul at the neighbors. So it's uh, provides excellent opportunities, you know, for people for you know training. So I wanna salute that and I wanna thank everyone for being here today at the Capitol. Uh, we have just a chance if anyone would like to say one more thing or two, a uh, phrase? Oh, just one yes, thing. Bobby. Um, right to work is an issue that everybody here is constantly having on their mind, and, and we never want to see that happen in Minnesota, although right now we're an it, island here. because Yeah, we're, we're the only one in the United States. Okay. 28 states. Yeah. You want to share right for our viewers right. what you're talking about for right to work, because we all support you know that you can work, anyway, but well, we're, we when we're but talking when? about... You know, right to work, the we union. do not want that here. Yeah, that's it's a it's a misconception, is what it is. Yes, uh, and why, why do we have unions? And and you know maybe to kind of cut to why it's important. You know benefits that you've earned. Uh, the the uni unions have um, back in history throughout um, throughout history, um, they're the ones that got you the the forty hour work week, the Monday through Friday. They're the ones that fought for overtime, overtime benefits. Your your benefits that you have. It doesn't matter if protection if you're injured or some work type comp. of work. Yeah, work, you know, comp. Work, workman's comp. You, you know, want to work, but we, we we fought for OSHA. You know, safety standards. Yes. Um, while you're working, so you sit, stay safe. Yes. And we're still working on that with trying to, um, with you know, like the move over law. Yes. Um, you know, 49ers, you know, electricians, move, yeah. you know, we work on the highways during the summer. Um, you know, so we don't always have those barricades to protect us. Yeah. You know, move over, you know, give us some room to work. Yeah. Well, everyone, I want to thank you again so much. Keep up the good work. And if there is anyone like more information about your respective uh, unions or just want issues to we're working on, get a hold of you. Show and you yes. a quick uh, photo. Okay. This is... Uh, a good description what the difference between union work versus non-union. Okay. This was a job that is my garage. Okay. Right after I retired, this company came in and they were redoing our streets. Mm -hmm. Okay, I understand that. Well, as you can see, these laborers, mm -hmm. they're down in a 12, 15 foot hole. Yep. There is no cribbing. There is no uh, sort of uh, rescue ladder. Egress. Yeah. There was no uh, uh, buddy there with a 